don't forget to share and subscribe and give us one of these if you enjoy the video. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm going to try to make a video here with Cecile cooking in front of me and Liam playing video games behind me. <laughs> See how well this works out. So I was going to talk to you guys about a idea that Cecile and I, well, it was suggested to us several years ago. And it's a way that is going to help us save on our medical expenses in the Philippines. Uh, before I get into the medical stuff, though, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, sending things to your wife's family in the Philippines. We just had, what do we have, three ballot buying boxes arrive uh, yesterday. Yesterday or the day before. And uh, one of them was for Cecile's family. And the other two were for us, just uh, saved in our house there. So the Ballard Mine box company delivered that to our house. And Cecile's mom met them there when they delivered that. And she had the kids with her when they opened the box of theirs at our house. They couldn't wait for their dad to get off work, I guess. So they, you said they brought bags with them? So they could all yeah. carry their stuff back home. But uh, we sent a box of stuff over because Cecile's brother just had a baby. Him and his girlfriend just had a baby. Uh, how old is Aaron now? Four months? Five. Five months. So almost five. About almost five months ago. So we wanted to send some baby gifts, you know, some stuff for the newborn baby. And while we were doing that, we wanted to include some stuff for the nieces and nephew as well as Cecile's mom so we had a big ballot buying box you know and if you're gonna send it you gotta fill it up so it's gotta be full so we put baby gifts in there and we had bought some clothes for the kids that we found on sale you know we're always looking for sale items for them if we see something that's pretty cheap but filling up an entire ballot buying box with clothes or gifts for the family can get kind of expensive so a lot of times people will say you know don't bother paying for the shipping just send them the money and let them buy stuff there which a lot of times that works out better but in this particular case uh, the baby stuff uh, I think you get a little bit better quality stuff and there's certain things you can buy for babies here that are really hard to find in the Philippines and it was just Cecile wanted to buy them some nice things for the baby so uh, to us, it was worth doing that, sending that stuff from here. But as far as the kids' clothes, what I wanted to mention about that, some people may disagree with this, some people might agree, but uh, we have some thrift stores here in Oklahoma City that actually have some pretty good clothing. And it would be hard for us to fill a box up with brand new clothes and send it to everybody there. So what we do a lot of times is we'll go and look in the thrift stores and try to find things that are just like new and sometimes the clothes still have the tags on them they're still you know brand new haven't even been used so we do go and look for that kind of stuff at the thrift stores and if you really just kind of look through there and pick through the clothes sometimes you can find some pretty good deals and and they're really happy to receive that stuff you know we find for the kids, we find them shorts, Nike, Adidas, you know, Reebok, all the expensive brands. And if you can buy them a pair of shorts for two dollars, uh, you know, it's a it's a pretty good deal. It's it's worth it to to pick through all the old clothes and find those uh, pieces like that. But uh, they're happy to receive them, and it's it's not the same Nike and Reebok and stuff that they would be buying there in the Philippines. If you send them the money. They would probably be trying to buy that stuff at the market or something and it's not going to be near the quality so uh, it's a good way for us to get clothes for them pretty cheap and send them good quality stuff so we did that and Cecile made a little video of them opening the box and they were happy to receive all that stuff yeah but the baby stuff are brand new yeah the baby stuff is brand new and like I said it's stuff that be hard to get there it's, it's good quality stuff and we just wanted to do that for them so uh, that box just arrived the other day and they were excited to open it. Cecile filmed a little bit of that. So on the medical stuff, uh, a lot of you already know if you're living in the Philippines, retired in the Philippines as an American, 
you won't have access to your Medicare. So once I'm eligible for, for Medicare, I wouldn't be able to use it in the Philippines. You could uh, go to Guam, I guess. It's about a four hour flight, four and a half hour flight. If you had some kind of medical procedure you wanted done, you have that option. It's not that far away. A lot cheaper to fly there than to fly all the way back to the States. Um, but Medicare, is not available to people in the Philippines. Uh, there are some other healthcare things available to veterans. You know, I don't know really about all the stuff with veterans, but uh, if you're not a veteran, you don't have access to veteran benefits, and you don't have access to Medicare, what do you do? So uh, I can tell you guys kind of what our plan is and just share that information with you. So the first thing that Cecile and I want to do is have a health savings account that we put money into just for medical expenses, any kind of doctor visit or medical procedures that we need to have done. And as we use some of that money, we'll try to put that money back each month and maintain a certain balance. Uh, so that's the, that's the main thing really that we plan to use for medical. And uh, that fund would be managed by us, so we would just do that on our own, and that money would be only for medical expenses. Uh, you know, for some people that they might think, well, you know, can you leave that money alone? You get a certain amount of money built up in an account, and you need it for something else, or you want to buy something, but we're going to try to keep that money solely for medical expenses. Uh, so that's a health savings account. The other thing that we're going to look into is health insurance. And we haven't really done a lot of checking on that yet in detail, but I do know that there are companies that offer health insurance to foreigners living in a country such as the Philippines. So we do intend to have a savings uh, health insurance policy for the whole family once we're there. There's a uh, insurance agent that's been featured on a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of different channels, and he may be somebody that we talk to, but uh, we'll do some more research on that later on. But we will have the health savings account, health insurance, and then the other thing we did uh, is a hospital investment. So about maybe four years ago, Cecile's godmother recommended to her that we invest in one of the hospitals there in our city and it wasn't anything that I had really ever heard of I didn't know anything about it and Cecile mentioned it to me we talked about it a little bit but we didn't think a whole lot about it and then Cecile's mom kind of started asking her uh, godmother some more questions about it found out a little bit more information and it turns out that she gets uh, dividends from that investment she gets a return on that investment and she also gets discounts at that particular hospital where she's a shareholder. So after hearing kind of more about that, Cecile became very interested. She wanted to invest in one of the hospitals there. So it's kind of been in the back of our minds for a few years now. And last time we were in the Philippines, we were eating at Yellow Cab Pizza at Vista Mall. And we just uh, ordered our food and we're getting our table and some people who subscribe to our channel happened to notice us through the glass there and they came inside and wanted to meet us and take a picture and all that so we met them and got to talking with them and that was Chip and Naughty and I hope you guys are doing good there in the Philippines and uh, we decided to meet up uh, a little while later for breakfast so we met them for breakfast one morning and we got to talking about um, different types of investments because Cecile and I have been trying to prepare for our retirement by looking for investment opportunities. We want to invest in some things so that we have income other than retirement income from the government. We want to have some investment income. So we, you know, have talked about rental properties, uh, business opportunities, things like that. And we were kind of kicking some ideas around and Cecile mentioned to them about the investment in the hospitals. And they had told us that they had just done that a couple years ago. So 
they were already doing that and they were excited about that and happy to have that investment. So they invested in one of the new hospitals in our city that's under construction right now. And Cecile and I had drove by and seen that construction project and we saw that it was going to be a hospital, but we didn't think too much about it until they told us that that was the one they invested in. And we kind of thought, man, it would be a good opportunity to get in early on that investment and, you know, and buy your shares before the hospital's even built. Because when we checked into buying, it was already higher than the price that they had paid just two years ago. So I'm assuming as they get closer to being completed and opening up, the shares are probably going to continue to rise. So uh, we went ahead and purchased a share in that hospital. And the hospital that we invested in is Bataan Medical Center. It's an existing hospital already. It's actually Bataan Women's Hospital right now. But the new hospital will be a full hospital with all kinds of services, not just for women. And they've changed the name now of the existing hospital to Bataan Medical Center. It's no longer Women's Hospital. And we can, if we're there before the new hospital opens, we can use the old hospital and get the benefits that a shareholder has at that hospital. We don't have to wait for the new hospital to open up. So I was going to mention um, the benefits that the hospital will offer you as a shareholder. As far as the cost goes, it's going to vary greatly from one hospital to the next and from one city to the next, I imagine. And also you have to take into consideration the, uh, you know, is it an established hospital? Is it a brand new hospital? Is it a small hospital or a large hospital? All those things are going to go into affecting the cost of what a share in that hospital would cost you. So each hospital is going to be different on the price and each hospital is going to be different maybe on the discounts they offer and what all services they offer at a discounted rate. So you really would just have to contact any hospital that you're interested in that's near you that you want to invest in and ask them, uh, you know, what is the cost to invest? What are the discounts? Do you get uh, return on your investment? Do you get earned dividends on that money? And just get that information directly from the hospital because I can't really give that kind of information and as far as the dividends go we haven't started any kind of earning on that so I couldn't tell you really what to expect on earnings because we wouldn't earn anything on our investment until after the new hospital is functioning and open and and earning money so as far as return on investment goes I couldn't really speak to that but what I was going to do is give you guys the list of discounts that they provided us at Bataan Medical Center. Cecile just dropped the chicken in the oil. You gotta let it cool a little bit. Okay, so, um, so the discounts for shareholders. Okay, so shareholders and spouses discounts. So if your wife is a shareholder, the discounts are applied to you as well as the spouse. Um, dental, 50% off consultation, 30% off restorative, preventative, periodontics, endodontics, surgery, and teeth whitening. So pretty good savings on any kind of dental procedures you might need. Uh, another big savings here is uh, on a room, uh, free board and lodging up to a suite room accommodation for 45 days. So to me, that is a big savings to think about not having to pay for your room or your food while you're in the hospital. If you have a long-term stay in the hospital, that's a big savings. Also 30% discounts on professional fees, x-rays, CT scan, UTZ, mammography, lab procedures, EEG, ECG, 2D echogram and physical therapy. So those are all discounted 30%. There's no operating room, delivery room, or emergency room fees except consumables. And then there's a 10% discount on pharmacy, CSR, and OR materials. 
So no operating room fee, no delivery room fee, and no emergency room fee is also a very big savings. Um, and being a shareholder like that, I think kind of maybe will allow us to build a little bit of a relationship with the hospital. We'll be using that as our main uh, medical facility. We'll be going to doctor's appointments there and dentist appointments there and being becoming familiarized very well with that hospital. So hoping, you know, over a number of years, you kind of build a relationship with the doctors there and the staff there and you feel comfortable using that hospital. So if something serious were to happen where we needed some kind of surgery or something, uh, it wouldn't be a brand new experience for us to go to that hospital for services. We'd have a little bit of a relationship already with that hospital and with the people working there. Another big thing is um, we're able to extend the discounts that are available to us to parents and also children. So in our case, uh, your parent or child would receive 50% of the discount that is extended to you as a shareholder. So Cecile's mom would receive 50% of the same discounts that we get. So if we get 50% off of something, she would get 25% off that same service. Or if we got 30% off on something, she would get 15% off. Um, so very helpful to her also. There's no age limit on parents and pre-existing conditions are covered. And also as a senior, Cecile's mom would receive a 20% discount. So very beneficial for Cecile's mom to receive these additional discounts plus her senior discount. So children under 21 years of age, pre-existing conditions also covered. And you know, that includes all the discounts that the shareholder gets, but 50%. So the dental, medical procedures, uh, all that, all those benefits uh, would be extended to parents and children also. And also on the child, the shareholder benefits that Cecile would receive are transferable to Liam. So Lee, she would be able to transfer that to Liam and then his children would get 50% of his discounts and his wife would get the full discount, same as him. So uh, good that you're able to just transfer that on to one of your children. Beef burrito? Yeah. So a beef burrito, a dog bowl, and a So that's lengthy. So the affritata we're going to eat tonight? Yeah. What's the, the adobo you're going to save? We're going to save it for one of our dinners. Okay. So we got a lot of cooking going on here today. Like a fiesta. Yeah. So we're looking forward to that uh, new hospital being completed. Uh, I don't know really how far along they are in construction. When we were there in Christmas time last year, they really just had a barricade fence up, construction fence, and I think the ground was just cleared off. I don't know if they were doing some underground work maybe, but there was no crane, I don't think. I don't remember seeing a crane or anything. I don't think they were too far along in the construction phase last year or so. Uh, I believe it's probably going to be a few years before the hospital's done, but I gotta, I gotta check it and see. But things that I should know more about, but we have so many things going on all the time. I haven't had time really to look into this too much, but uh, we are paid. Cecile's paid her share, so she got her paperwork back from the hospital and everything's good to go. Um, yeah, you can do installments. Yeah, you can pay it all at once or you can pay installments. And that's, wh that's what they offer to us anyway. Like I said, you got to check with each hospital. But I would imagine most of them are going to do installments. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking forward to it being completed. They have a architect rendering on their Facebook page that I can show to you. And, uh, yeah, nice modern state-of-the-art hospital coming soon to... Belonga City, Bataan, and we do have another pretty new hospital there. Uh, Centro Medico is built about, I want to say, five years ago, four years ago. 
And then there's a few other hospitals around the city that are private hospitals, pretty nice hospitals. So we do have good health care around us, and that's something that's really important. And sometimes people don't think about that. Maybe when they decide to live somewhere in retirement, what kind of medical facilities do you have near you, and how long does it take you to get there? One of the issues about living out in the province sometimes is health care. And it's also one of the reasons why we kind of prefer the city. I've always said that Cecile and I prefer living in the city over the province just because of everything that's available to us in the city. And we can visit the province anytime we want to, but we prefer to live in the city, be near the hospitals, the city offices, immigration offices, um, stores, restaurants, all that. You know, we're, we're close to a lot of things and we're only 45 minutes from Subic and there's a lot of stuff in Subic for expats. And we're about an hour away from Clark, which, you know, everything you need is in Clark as a foreigner. Um, you know, they've got all the food and everything like that that you might be looking for. And we're about three hours from Manila. They are building the Cavite, Cavite to Mar Maravellas Bridge project that's going to connect Manila directly to Bataan. And that should cut our travel time to Manila down quite a bit, but I think we're still looking at over an hour, but you know, not bad. We don't have to fly or anything like that. Yeah. So hopefully it won't be too bad going to Manila. We'll be able to do that easier and more often. So that's one thing we do get a lot of questions about is kind of, you know, what's your plan for healthcare because we can't use Medicare there and people looking for information and advice. So this is something that we mentioned uh, last year in one of our videos. I think we made a video while we were going to pay that, make the payment at the hospital and, and, and get that finalized. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go into more detail because I didn't have all the list of discounts and everything at that time. So I wanted to go over that and talk about it a little more and bring it to people's attention in case maybe it's something you hadn't heard of. And uh, you might be interested in. And then just to make sure, just go to the inside the hospital and who are inside, not the any person you're going to talk to. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, yeah, it's a good idea if you're going to be interested in inquire. this. If you want to inquire at a certain hospital, just go inside. Uh, they should have some kind of business office that's dealing with that type of thing. Uh, that's what we did. We went directly to the business office. I think they actually called that area that we went to a Share. shareholder's lounge. I uh, believe there's a limit to limit only. Limit? Limit of uh, shareholders. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's possible. Cecile's saying there could be a limit on the number of shares available. I'm sure there probably is. Yeah. Because we looked into investing in a uh, beach club a couple of years ago. There's a... Uh, resort in Bagoth. It's a privately owned resort. You can buy shares and over time your share increases in value. You can sell that and earn profit and then you receive discounts. When you use the facility you get um, member rates on rooms and things like that. So uh, they were sold out. There was no shares available. So we got on a waiting list and it's been about two years and nobody's called yeah, me. I <laughs> Year. Last year, yeah, still this waiting. Year I and then they said they're gonna email me once they're available. Yeah, to still share. haven't haven't heard anything. But yeah, anyway, that's uh, you know, something good to think about since Medicare is not available there. You need to have some kind of plan. And like I said, Guam is an option. But if you can deal with your health situations there in the Philippines, I think you're gonna be better off rather than trying to run back to the United States or go somewhere whenever you have a problem. If you can find a facility that you feel is good and you're comfortable with it, I think that's the best way to approach it. That's how we're going to try to do it. If things come up, we're going to try to deal with it there as best we can. And if last resort, if we had to go somewhere else, that's what we would do. But we'll try to deal with everything best we can in the Philippines. So we just wanted to 
get a little bit more detailed about that and share that information with you guys. So if you guys enjoy the videos, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you guys and consider becoming a channel member. And also remember all of our videos are available on VHS tape and all of the music that we play on our videos, we have that available on 8-track. So that's just a joke. <laughs> that's not real. We don't have a store yet. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll see you on the next video. I thought that was going to crash.